Hi and welcome to the scroll. This is an updated video for the enhanced version. Without further ado, we will go ahead and check out the changes by starting a new campaign, the World of Our Tower. The first day. You will notice the scroll now has its own dedicated scroll image for loading screens. We will start by selecting a character. Anyone should do. Pick out a spard and go with that. I'll skip the video. Yes, yes, yes! But here we are. Well met, into the game. Sarah, and welcome to the Altair campaign. Previously, you used to have to reload a game after saving it, but in the enhanced version, you no longer have to do that. Here's the important information, which uh, you will not be able to um, remove unless you choose the main menu. As it says, some buttons are not available until we're within the game proper. So, without further ado, we will now open the main menu, clear down the warning message, and again, I'll come back to this in a moment, but I'll close it for now. This way, come on, Slowpoke. We have Keep to up. select a background, which will be either one, if you know the campaign already, or which is normally just for my players, or two, a fresh start, if you're new to the campaign. And we get the background info, click OK, and we get the opportunity now to add two, two or three other characters. And just for the testing, I'll add three other characters. You can add more characters later on, and in fact my wife's been known to have up to, in the party, a total of around about 22. That includes six controllable characters um, with all their summons and henchmen you can have. Uh, it can add up quite quickly. Uh, you, at this point you were made to save the game, so I'll save it automatically. Journal notes updated. Yeah. You, with larger parties it's payable to toggle the size of these characters down a bit. I've also increased the height at which the the GUI holds characters so you can fit a fair number on before you lose sight of them down the bottom of the screen. Okay, what can I start with? The main menu. Here we can get information on the vigor system. Each character has their own level of vigor. As it drops so they will suffer penalties. As it drops too low they will also suffer penalties to attack. To overcome vigor it's normally through resting or food or at an inn where you get both. There is information on that through the rule information uh, which I will show you in a moment. This one, this menu also gives you the option to improve a weapon with the right skills or, or games mechanic uh, items. You can also rename equipment that you can have equipped. Accessing the rule information not only updates the journal for the first time but it gives you access to one or two of the rules that are already available. This will also dynamically update as you encounter new rules so you can come back and check these out as and when if they apply to your situation. I would recommend reading them at least once when you come to a situation where they bear relevance. Hopefully by the time you've played the game for a while it will begin to make sense and you won't need to refer to them again. Law and Arcana is just another reading section as you pick up lore throughout playing the game. Purely optional, read it or don't, subject to how much you want to become involved in the in the storyline. Okay, let's close that for now. I'm going to open the journal. You uh, right, as you can see, the journal has, in fact, two states. You can either have it in the large size, as we see it here, or you can click the toggle size button and have it in its standard size. I personally just prefer the larger size. The journal also has the layout of the larger description of what is being requested of you in a quest, but it also has a very brief one-line objective to make it easy to see what it is you need to do to clear the next section to the quest. In this particular case, the orange ones represent it here are to do with rules and information which you can clear to try and introduce you to some of the new elements within the game already. For instance, the Altair calendar. Is the rules are explained here and it says to clear it just open the calendar so the calendar is this one here open you close you know how to open and close it now and if we go back to the journal this has now been completed the rules was completed earlier when we looked at the rules section moving on down the bottom we have the standard um, quick hot hot bars 
but we also have to say the access to the main menu we have an access to maps which we don't carry any at the moment we have access if we wanted to go straight to the auto pause the auto pause for combat does have an option here which we can toggle it's a global setting so once that's been set it doesn't matter which character you're in yes it's set for everyone we've also got a global setting for if a trap triggered and we've also got uh, a global pause on a life rebirth even though it's an individual pc setting on the top you can turn the auto rebirth on or off for pc individual settings you also have a chest relock option again that's pure unlikely to be used the second one because unless you're in a situation where you want to be able to relock a chest after opening it then that one won't be required selecting the character switches between the various mm, yes, feedbacks yes. for that individual character we also then have so if we for instance did have the auto pause if any be sent on what would happen when we met an enemy it would do this this is the combat starting I manually started it there in the same way I can manually turn it off you have to watch the other video to see how that man is managed in turn based combat if it's not on it wouldn't happen anyway and it would just play like a normal Neverwinter Nights game next to the uh, the party pause we've got the AI options the AI options can be as they are here all on for all characters you can double right click to turn off individual characters and the brain icon now changes from green to green and pink it will also can be used as a button just to toggle all, information all off updated. there you go you get an update on the fact that you've just handled AI you can read that later or you can just toggle it all back on again it's a purely a toggle system makes it a lot easier to control AI in every case for now I'll just leave it on for everyone next to that is the hit point bar toggle which again we don't have at the moment because we don't have the feet that's something that you can buy later other than that we have the standard icons on the far right one more before we get on to other things is the statistics just a small uh, mechanics which I've added to allow players to sort of compare how their different PCs have, have, have come back either through a revival, a respawn, a rebirth or raise subject to the death style you're playing uh, number of life essences and other games mechanic that you're currently collecting and how well they've done against various foes and who's the most competent fighter within the group at the moment obviously everyone's incompetent because we haven't done anything weather is dynamic as you can hear it can go to lightning from a sunny day we are in the evening anyway so it's going to get dark um, in which case I will pause and move it well actually before I pause I will just demonstrate how the resting works press R it warns us that we cannot rest without access to food we don't carry any food so if I try to do set up camp I need at least one one ration to allow a rest so instead that gong you hear is the saying you must read the warning to find out what it is that you're running short of to be able to rest. Instead we can however wait. So we'll just wait. It does a until six o'clock the following day or six o'clock in the evening. I did that to give us a little more light to work by. Okay. It does of course mean though having waited around that we're now hungry and that's where you can see the penalties have come up for each one. We can lose those penalties by resting with food, either with rations or at an inn. I will also now bring up the main menu and you can see here where the vigour has in fact decreased and we are yes. indeed hungry. Yes. 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 We also have a load time. In this case we've been playing this session for 9 minutes, unpaused, and the overall total time is 9 minutes. The more sessions you play, Obviously, this records individual sessions, this records overall playtime. Okay, the other improvements made with the Enhanced Edition under the character sheet, you can double right click on the portrait and it tells you what um, background the character already has. So, this chap's a ladies' man. Yes. She doesn't have one. So, at this point, this now allows us to be able to select one. 
uh, subject to certain restrictions. Let's say we wanted to make her devout. We can confirm our selection. She's now got the devout feet. There we go. And if I click on Bridget, she's already a flirt. Scylla looks like she's already a flirt as well. So background options are going to be encouraged to be at least selected for each PC in the next module, especially as it has a bigger impact on the conversation options available. I've also, for those who are familiar with the uh, portrait selection, improved the way portraits can be selected. It's a lot easier now just yes. to switch between the various characters to the portrait yes. and then just close it once you've finished, like that. Or you can if we go back into it, just clear them down just by selecting mm. clear, select, yes. clear, close, done. There you go, that's a, an improvement there as well. Party Craft is a useful tab showing you all the various parts that you've acquired already. At the moment they're all zero. And who is the best crafter for alchemy or armor or weapon or anything to do with magic? Um, skills, I've compacted them slightly to be able to allow it slightly easy to see. Some of these descriptions will have updated due to the rule changes or just more information in general for an ancient crafting system or a modern crafting system. Um, overall, everything else is pretty much the same though to what you've played before. I'll go into the map now, show you the map. It's got the fog of war. You've got updated um, map icons. You can, in fact, add your own map pins if you wanted to. If I select the main yes. character, you'll see you can add a pin now. So if I put here, start location, and create the pin, You'll see there, there is a little pin that's been added. I'll move out of the way. At the moment, you can hover here and see it say start location. If I wanted that to update within the actual map itself, it will update when you leave the area and come back anyway. But if you wanted it to happen immediately, as long as you're the host player and it's a single player game, just update the map pins. You leave the area and come back immediately. Yeah, so that nice. when you look at the map, that pin is already correctly same what it is same for deleting just bring up the map edit map pins that's the closest one we can either delete it or just leave it as it is change the text whatever you want to do it will only again update when you when you leave the area uh, other than that that's everything I wanted to show at this stage I believe thank you for watching <laughs>